Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be showing you guys a quick little um, feature that's in the Canon R6 that some people might not know about or know how to use, and that is the HDR photo feature. So if you go into the menu system and you're on the red camera, which is the first menu on the far left, and then you scroll over to five, you'll see the HDR photo section. You can go in there, enable it, and in there I have a list here. Um, you'll uh, set dynamic range to auto. I found that to be the easiest way to use this feature. And then you have effects. So the effects will change how the photos look after you take the series of images that will be merged into an HDR image. And so they have natural, which will give you a natural looking photo, but you'll get that full dynamic range of the photo. So if there's a super dark area and a super bright area, it's going to take a series of images and merge them together so you can get all the detail in all those dark or light areas by taking a photo that's too bright, that's right in the middle, and then one that's too dark. And that allows it to get all that range of exposure within the image. Now you have Art Standard, Art Vivid, Art Bold, Art Embossed. All of these are going to enhance the image in a more artistic way, you could say. Um, maxing it out is the art embossed. It's going to look super different. It's going to look super weird. Kind of has like this, like it says, embossed look. Um, so each one kind of intensifies the features of the image. So it's kind of like a trial and error on what you're going for. I personally like the art standard and natural because it kind of keeps everything looking realistic. It doesn't look super artistic or super um, edited. Um, so I feel like it's just a very good starting point for any image. So in the settings, I also use the auto align and save the source images. This is all in the menu system. Um, having the auto align, when you take the photo, so when you have this on, you could either have it for one time use or you can have it for every photo. So yesterday I went out and shot and I had it for every photo because I wanted to do this video and show you what each setting looks like, each effect. And so when you take a photo, it will take a burst of three images and it will do the auto settings basically for you. And then it'll merge those photos and align them. And then you could see it in camera, the final image. But if you save the source images, you can then take those images when you get home and put them in Lightroom or Photoshop and merge them yourself. That will give you a little more um, creative workflow so you can um, do what you wanna do to the photos um, instead of letting the camera do it. Now, when you do the auto merge and auto align in the camera, it doesn't give you a raw image, it gives you a JPEG. So once you get into Lightroom, it's gonna have a little bit of less room for editing, but you're still gonna be able to do anything you would typically do to an extent. So it's kind of nice because you have the source images if you really just don't like how the camera did it. And then you also have the merged image already if you just wanna have that image done and ready um, to share. So I like saving the source images. It does take up more room because you're taking three photos per shot. So when you're taking a photo of a car, it's going to take three photos. It's going to merge it. You're going to have those three photos plus the merged photo. So you're going to have four files for that one image. So areas where I feel like this could really come in handy. Um, HDR is used a lot in real estate photography because when you're shooting real estate and you're trying to show a living room and everything that's in it, using HDR allows the photographer or you to get the full dynamic range of the exposures that could be in a living room. Like if you have windows bringing in sunlight and then you got lights and it's kind of dark in a corner, using HDR is going to allow you to get the proper exposure for the windows and the proper exposure for that dark corner that might be in the back of the photo. So this comes in handy for real estate a lot of times. Um, it could also come in handy if you're just trying to capture um, like say like if you're at a car show and you're shooting into a hood of a car and you want to show the engine bay or the interior of the car you can do this handheld on a sunny day 
and get that full exposure so you can see everything that's in the engine bay because you know there's a lot of nooks and crannies inside of a car or under the hood. So that's just a couple examples. So I hope you guys enjoyed these sample images I've been sharing. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If there's any other feature in the R6 that you would like to see, um, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to get a short little video put out as quick as possible so you can see how to use it or what exactly it does. But until next time, I appreciate if you like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.